If you're building a completely new system for yourself or you know you just want to upgrade your gaming PC with a new power hungry graphics card you're going to need a power supply and uh, even though I would say it's not the most exciting part of your system it is definitely one of the most important ones because a good reliable power supply will keep your system running stable it will protect your other components on a daily basis and therefore keep them running longer, while a bad quality power supply is nothing but trouble. In the best case scenario, it can just fry your other components, and in the worst case scenario, it is a straight up fire hazard. So you should definitely take this step seriously and never ever cheap out on a power supply. It will be worth it in the long run. Now, even though it sounds a bit overwhelming at the start, uh, picking your next power supply is actually pretty straightforward and very easy to do. So that's what I'll be talking about today and I'll be doing that with the help of Seasonic because they obviously thought that this was a very interesting topic so they were kind enough to sponsor this video and to send a couple of different models to help me explain some of the differences between them and hopefully help you pick a proper power supply that fits you best. Let's begin. So the first thing you need to do when picking a power supply is to filter out unknown brands or manufacturers with a bad or unproven reputation. Now pretty much any company can just go to a power supply factory, they can buy a cheap design, slap a nice sticker on it and make it look good to make some quick cash. But they're usually quite cheap and you know that's why they might seem tempting but they pretty much skip on quality to make them as cheap as possible and with that a lot of safety measures as well. So you should always stick to well-known brands that have been making power supplies for a long time now and have built a very good reputation over the years. So next to Seasonic, uh, brands like Cooler Master, like Corsair or Be Quiet are also worth checking out uh, as I use them as well and know them to be reliable. And if there are any brands that you usually go for, please mention them in the comments down below and I will check them out. Now you will also quite often see some other big brands coming out with their own power supplies to match their other products. Uh, for example, Asus and Fantax have their own power supplies, but they are actually made by Seasonic. So if you want your power supply in your next build to match your other hardware, uh, try to first find out which manufacturer is behind it. And if you cannot find that out, you know, just stick to the well-known brands that I mentioned earlier and you'll be fine. I mean, it's not like you will see your power supply in most cases anyway, so it doesn't matter as much. Now, the next step would definitely be the size of your power supply, which will completely depend on the size of your case. Now, when you look at the specifications of your case, it will say which power supply it will fit, and you will usually have to choose between an ATX, the big one, or an SFX, the small one, right here. Now, there's some other sizes as well, but they're actually really niche and not really worth talking about today. And if you need those, they will either come with your case or, you know, there won't be many models to choose from anyway. Now, the ATX uh, would be the big ones right here, uh, and they fit the vast majority of PC cases. So if you have a mid-size or a larger tower case, you can pick any ATX power supply and it will fit just fine. I think 95% of the builds out there are rocking an ATX power supply. Also, if you're going for a smaller PC that still says it fits an ATX power supply, you do want to check what length of a power supply will fit because some are a bit longer than others. So a typical power supply would be around 14 centimeters long, higher end ones would be 16 to 17, and on top of that you also need to make sure that there is a couple of centimeters free for cables as well. And if you're going for a tiny compact build and you want that small form factor ITX case, you will most likely need the small SFX power supply as well. Now you need to see if it only fits an SFX or also the slightly larger L model. Now the upside of the L models is that they fit a larger fan which is always a good thing especially in these smaller cases. So for example uh, this Focus SGX power supply is a slightly larger L model and this is the standard SFX one so you know you can see the difference between them. The next step would be to find out what capacity you need for your system aka how many watts, and this will completely depend on the specs of your computer. So let's break it down a bit. The biggest factor is your graphics card. Entry-level cards like GTX 1650 Super typically use less than 100 watts. Mid-range cards usually sit around 
the 200 watt mark and high-end cards like the new RTX 3080 or RX 6900 XT will run closer to 300 or more. So that really affects the overall power draw. Now your CPU is the second biggest factor and typically you need around 60 to 70 watts for a mid-range CPU like a Ryzen 5 3600 or 5600 X, but high-end CPUs like an Intel Core i9 or an AMD Ryzen 9 under that big cooler can sometimes pull up to 150 watts or even more. Now, most of your other hardware like cooling, memory, SSDs, hard drives, peripherals, and RGB actually don't affect your power supply choice as much, um, assuming you don't plan on making a server that uses you know, 15 mechanical hard drives. But generally speaking, I usually count roughly 100 watts for everything else, which gives you plenty of headroom for any extras. So if we add all that up, a system with a low end to mid range CPU and GPU will typically use up to 250 to 300 watts of power in total. And since most good power supplies start at around 400 to 500 watts anyway, you know, just get one of those and you will be just fine. But let's look at the high end system. If you have an i9 or a Ryzen 9 with a top of the line RTX or a Radeon RX card, you're looking at about 500 to 550 watts altogether. But you also notice that everyone recommends an 850 watt power supply, which, you know, doesn't really add up, does it? But there are actually two very good reasons for that. Now, the first one is to deal with higher power spikes that can occur in a high power system like this one. So a 550 watt rig can easily spike up to 650 watts and sometimes even more which doesn't happen all the time, but it definitely does happen. And the second reason is that every power supply is most efficient when it's not running full load. So closer to 50% is ideal, 60 to 75% load is just fine, but what you really don't want to do is pull 550 watts out of a 550 watt power supply all the time. It will create a lot of heat, it will be really loud trying to get rid of that heat to be able to push more. And remember those spikes I mentioned earlier? So yeah, for a really high-end rig with the latest CPU and the GPU, 850 watts is actually a very good recommendation. However, if you already have a good quality 750 watt model, it will usually be able to handle your new rig just fine. Uh, it might be a tiny bit more noisy, but you know, that's pretty much it. But if you want to overclock your CPU and your GPU, the overall power consumption can go up by a lot. A 100 watt processor can easily be pushed up to 250 to 300 watts with a very good overclock. And the same goes for a GPU. A 300 watt GPU can be pushed to 450 watts easily. So that explains why we have those crazy 1000 or 1300 watt power supplies on the market. So if you plan on doing some serious overclocking in the future, give yourself a good amount of headroom. Now that we've chosen a reputable brand, the size and the capacity of your power supply, it all comes down to which features you want and how much you want to spend on your power supply. Now, the first thing I usually look for is that all cables are black. I mean, it's 2020 and there is just no excuse for ketchup and mustard cables anymore. And even if you want to save up a bit and go for a really affordable model like the uh, S12 III that I have right here that will cost you under 50 euros, I mean, you won't get any extras with it, but your system will still look good if the cables are all black. And if you have a bit more room in your budget, I would strongly recommend getting a modular power supply. Now, standard power supplies have all the cables connected to them, while modular power supplies come with all the cables on the side and they allow you to only use the ones you actually need. So you end up with fewer cables to deal with, which makes that wretched cable management a bit less annoying at the end. Now, a fully modular power supply is the nicest, and um, if you can, you should always go for that one. But even a semi-modular one would be a big upgrade, in my opinion. Now, a semi-modular one has all the core cables fixed to it, so for the motherboard, for the CPU, and some of your GPU cables, and the rest you can add depending on your needs. Now, those will usually only cost you about $10 extra, so I would say there is no reason not to go for it, but the prices may differ in your region. Now, keep in mind, you need to make sure that your power supply has all the connections you need. So, for example, if your graphics card needs three 8-pin connectors, you need to make sure that your power supply will have it. And if you plan on overclocking and, you know, you want that extra CPU power, you need to make sure that your power supply comes with an extra CPU cable for your motherboard. 
Makes sense, right? Now the next feature is very subjective, but I personally find it important as I love a super quiet system, especially when in idle or when you're just browsing the internet or typing something for work. Now higher end power supplies often come with a fan stop mode, which obviously means that the fans will stop when you're not stressing your system. Now, some power supplies like Seasonic's higher-end focus models and prime units actually come also with a little button on the back of the power supply to turn that feature on or off, depending on your preference. And I would say, I think that's a great alternative to fully passive power supplies, which can get really, really expensive. And to be honest, I find them kind of useless because in higher load situations like gaming, for example, uh, when you're power supplies fans will spin up a bit, your GPU and CPU will almost always make more noise than your power supply anyways. Now your next consideration will be price and warranty. When looking at a good brand, uh, they'll often have an even higher quality models for an even higher price for those that are looking for it. But technically, I would say you don't really need to get a higher end prime or a focus model, for example. I guess it will largely depend on the total cost of your system, so you probably won't care about spending $20 or $30 more on a high-end rig that costs $3,000 already than you will on a budget gaming rig where that little bit of money can get you, you know, a better CPU or maybe a storage upgrade. Now, you do usually get a longer warranty with the more expensive models, like you would get 12 years on a Prime model versus 10 years on a Focus GX. And I would say the very last thing, which I also find the least interesting, would be the efficiency rating. Now, most brands use 80 plus labels as some indication of quality. So you have 80 plus bronze, gold, titanium, and so on, and higher ratings are better, but also cost much more. In practice, I don't think you should worry about it too much. I mean, it's nice to see a 80 plus bronze on a budget power supply, and it's good to see 80 plus gold or better on a higher end one but paying a lot more for platinum or titanium is usually not going to pay itself back over time. Now, personally, I don't really see or hear a difference between them, uh, but I would say just keep an eye on the price, really. If the difference between the two is very, very small, you just might as well go for it. I think that's pretty much it for today. Now, of course, some things about a power supply will completely depend on your specific case and your setup, so it is still important to pay attention to details if you're running some exotic hardware. For example, in some extremely large cases, you do need to consider the length of the power supply cables and you know with some extreme graphics cards that have a lot of connections or if for some strange reason you want a multiple graphics card setup you want to make sure that your power supply offers enough cables like i said before so do make sure you do check your power supply product page if you're going for something that's you know, out of the ordinary. And if you want your system to look even better and you kind of want to order some nice custom cable extensions at the end of your build, make sure you get high quality ones from well-known shops like Cable Mod, for example. And please don't order cheap ones from AliExpress as, you know, bad cables can really affect your system stability. And again, risk your components. I hope this whole video was clear enough and I really hope it did answer some of the questions or doubts you had about a power supply. And if there is absolutely anything else that you still want to know, please leave a comment down below or ask something on our Discord and I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more or do consider joining Patreon if you want to support this channel even more so we can make more content like this one and add some more quality to it. Bye bye guys and see you in the next one.